Hey guys, so welcome to the second video in the series. Um, if you remember in the last video, we talked about data types and variables. Uh, we went briefly into some of the things that Python can do. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about operators, and we're going to be doing some print statements, some input, um, a little, a few small console applications, and just applying some of the knowledge that we've learned. So pretty much the first thing I want to do is I want to go back and I want to review what we did in the last lesson very quickly. So we talked about variables and data types. So for example, the x variable, we could set it to something equal to 2, like that. Uh, a name, we made equal to our name, right? So I make that equal to Tim. Um, so there we go. We have the name right there equal to Tim. We'll start with that, okay? Now, if you remember in the last one, I didn't talk about this, but I used something called print. Now, the print statement pretty much takes an argument. So inside of these brackets, the thing that is inside that brackets is called the argument. So it takes a, uh, a string argument usually, so I will give it the name. So now you'll see, again, we did this in the last one, just want to review, I'm clicking F5 simply to run the program. When I go to the console, it simply puts Tim onto the console, just like that, right? Okay, um, very basic, we already did that. So now let's say, well, we want to do something else. So let's let's print here. And we're just going to put a string, and we're just going to type this in ourselves. So let's say, hello, comma, what is your name? That's going to print to the console. Now, we want to get what the user's name is. Now, there's a way to do this in Python. It's very simple. We're going to make a variable name. It makes sense to put the variable name here. And do an equal sign because it's a variable, right? And we're going to type the word input, just like this. Now what's going to happen if I run the program here, I'll show you, is it's going to say, hello, what is your name? And it's going to actually allow me now to type into the console, which I couldn't do before. Now nothing happens after when I click enter because we don't have anything else after that, but it's allowing me to type. Okay, so now, well, we want to print out what the name is that was said. So let's just simply type print and then name. All right. And we have, hello, what is your name? I say, oh, well, my name's Tim. It says, Tim. All right. Now, well, we just printed out the name, but maybe we want to go a little more advanced than that. We want to say, well, hello, Tim. How are you doing, Tim? Something like that, right? So I'm going to just put a comma here. I'm going to separate these two things. And I'm going to put in a string. And I'm just going to type what I like to type. So I'm going to say, hello, with a comma. And then you see that I have this other comma here that is outside of the quotations, meaning it's not a string, it's actually just separating the two arguments in here. And you'll notice what happens now when I print is it goes, hello, what is your name? So I say, oh, well, my name's Tim. It says, hello, Tim. Right? So that's pretty straightforward. I hope that's easy to understand. We're just using the input to get an input, and then we're printing it back out to the screen. Okay, so let's do, um, let's go into the next part of this. Now we'll use that again later, but let's talk about operators. So operator, that term may sound familiar to you. Um, in math, uh, we use things called operators. So these four operators hopefully should look familiar to you. Um, this is a plus sign. This is the addition operator. We have the minus sign, which is the subtraction operator, the division sign, which is the, well, division operator, and then the multiplication sign, which is, again, the multiplication uh, operator. So there's a few more operators that we'll talk about, but these are the four basic ones in Python. Now, you remember how I talked to you about data types? This is where this comes in. When we use these operators, it's important that we use them on certain data types. So for example, um, in math, I could do something like 3 plus 4. Right, so what is 3 plus 4 equal? Well, that is equal to 7. So the computer can actually do that math operation by using that operator to return those values. So let's let's give an example here quickly. So I have, uh, let's do num1. We're going to use variables here. Uh, remember, I can use a number in the variable as long as it's not at the beginning. And I'm going to give it a value of 45. And then we'll do num2, and we're going to give it a value of 3. Now, if I want to print to the console, um, let's say num1 plus num2, well, you can guess what that's going to give us. It's going to give us 45 plus 3, I hope, if this is not an error. Yeah, so that gave us 48, right? So, oops, didn't mean to make that full screen. num1 plus num2 is 48. All right, so now what about minus? Let's try this. 42, basic. Um, we can do 
multiplication here with the multiplication sign. There we go, 135. And then we'll try again with the division sign just to show you all of them. We get 15.0 like that, OK? So that's pretty straightforward, um, those four basic operators. Now in Python, there's a few more operators that we want to talk about. Now, for example, in math, we have something called exponents, right? So how do we do exponents in Python? Well, it's actually two stars is how you do an exponent. All right, and now maybe there's something called integer division, um, which I'll get into later, but I'll just show you the operator for it right now. It's two slashes. That means, uh, I'll give you an example, a math example here, 64 divided by, um, let's do 10, um, would give us usually in math a value of 6.4, right? That's if you use one division sign. Sorry, what am I doing times? I mean, divided by, would give us 64. I have 6.4. But now if we do two division signs here like this, it actually gives us a value of 6. That's because it just, um, it doesn't worry about the remainder at all. It just tells us um, how many times 10 can go into 64. Um, and that's all. It can go in six times evenly. So it gives us a whole number as our answer. That's called integer division, this double, double slash like this. Okay. And then we have another operator, which is actually the modulus operator. Um, so this is the percentage sign and this gives us the remainder. So here, if I do five modulus two, then the remainder of that is actually one because five divided by two is four then with the remainder of one, right? So it's not going to give us the decimal points. It's again, just going to give us the remainder. If I did five divided by four, again, the remainder is one, five divided by three, the remainder would be two like that. Okay. So that's what the modulus sign um, gives us. So we'll put modulus here. And then there's probably a few others that I'm forgetting about, but we can go into those later. So now, um, same thing, let's keep using our number variables here. And now let's introduce a third variable called num3. Now, um, I want to show you how we can use the variables. So num1, and let's see if you remember what this operator is. Uh, so that's the exponent operator. So that means num1, which is going to be our base, uh, which is 45, raised to the power of 4, because we're going to use num2. And we can print num3. Press OK. And you can see we get a pretty large number. Um, that's because of how exponents work. And then same thing here. If we want to do maybe integer division, you can see what we're going to get. We get 11, right? A whole number. And then say we want to do modulus. We get one. Okay, so now let's tie all these things together with the operators that we've used, the variables, the prints, and the inputs. So, um, Let's start by just get doing a little print statement and saying, pick a number. Okay, pretty basic. We're going to pick a number. And then we're going to take the input. So we're going to say num1 again is equal to the input of that. Okay, so we got the input of num1. Um, now let's say print pick another number. All right, so now we're going to pick another number. So we're going to do num2 is equal to input like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our third variable. So we'll call it sum because we're going to add these is equal to num1 plus num2. And now actually you can't use sum because it's a reserved word. So let's just do in all capitals sum because remember how we talked about variables, capitals and lowercase are different. And then we're going to print to the console the sum like that. Okay. So we run the program, it says pick a number. Uh, let's pick a number, let's say four, and let's do 32. Now, what do you think it's gonna be? Oh, oops, okay. So yeah, sum one equals num one plus num two. Okay, so this is why um, I talked about data types. So I'm actually uh, happy this happened. It's because what actually happens when we get the input of something is it gives us the type of a string. Um, which in this case is not what we wanted to do. So um, you saw there, I'll run it again. Um, it's a good mistake that this happened actually. We have four and we have a three and it gave us 43. That's just because we added the string four to the string three. Um, so that simply gave us 43. But now we know in actual math that four plus three equals seven. So if we want to do 
um, the integers, we have to actually convert these variables into integers. So in order to do that, remember I showed you the keyword um, int like this before. We're just going to put brackets around our two variables here, like this, integers. And now, hopefully, we should get the correct answer when we do 4 and we do 3. And you can see we've got 7. So um, I didn't mean for that to happen originally, but I'm happy it did because it shows us why data types are important. So when we take the input of something, we're typing it from the keyboard, and that is actually a string. So um, here we can print again. Um, don't worry about what I'm doing right now, but I just want to show you the type, which is going to give us if it's a string, if it's an integer of num2, just to show you what the type actually is. So we pick a number, we pick 2, and we pick 3. It tells us that 3 is actually a string. So that's why when we added originally 3 and 2, or 2 and 3, or whatever it was, um, it gave us just them added together, so 2 and 3, rather than what it should be, which is 5. Okay. Now same thing here, if we had a number, and we wanted to convert it into a string, all we would do is we'd type str around the number, so for example 3, and then that would give us 3, just like that, so a string. So now we've kind of gone over a conversion of variables, um, conversion of numbers, data types, how to get input from the console using the input like this, um, and some basic operators of Python. So uh, review this, I hope you followed along, and then in the next lesson we'll move into some more advanced operators, and we'll maybe start with conditions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you in the next video.